Hey, what's going on, YouTube? Strider's back with another high ELO daily cast. I'm actually working with a graphic designer to get a new intro and a background, get my uh, YouTube a little bit more professional looking, so everybody look forward to that. Sounds like a great time to me. Uh, so in this particular game, we're gonna. this is going to be really interesting. We have a lot of amazing players in this game. Um, of course, the Helignite Silsol. It would not be a solo queue game without Helignite Silsol. It just wouldn't. I don't care who you are. Helignite Silsol, number one. Uh, we do have Hood Stomp, Champion Mage, Salse, Erwin Booze, uh, Bloodwater, Mandatory Cloud. Yeah. It's going to be a good game, to say the least. Uh, so, on the blue team, starting off, we have Alistair, uh, who's going to provide a lot of CC for the team, just with that head button pulverize, of course. Uh, we do also have Brand, uh, who is going to provide a little bit of CC. It's conditional CC, because you do have to hit somebody with a spell before you hit them with your skill shot of your Q before it will stun them. It's not the greatest, most reliable stun, but it's still a stun. And then we have Kennen, who provides amazing AoE stuns. So this Kennen, uh, Kennen brand combo is going to be ridiculously good later on in the game. Because they both just do so much damage. If uh, if Kennen can get two to three, uh, hopefully three, if he can get three to four people in his ult, and Bran can get his ult off on those same four people, they're going to be melted down, literally. Just with lightning and fire and death and bleh, It's going to be crazy. Especially with the just headbutt pulverize combo from Alistair. They were a really dirty combo with just those champions. Ezreal is laughing. Uh, <laughs> Ezreal is going to be pretty good in this comp since they have a lot of stuns to... Uh, a lot of stuns to just keep them protected. Uh, so it's going to be a nice little game to protect the Ezreal. Uh, Ezreal does have quite a bit of damage, especially if he gets his Trinity Force first. He'll be able to do quite a bit. Uh, York is really good for support as well. Uh, once he gets level 6, he's going to be able to copy somebody on the team. And that's going to be really powerful. It's not the best combo with Ezreal, but, you know, it's not the worst thing either. Of course, uh, it can't. it's never really the worst thing. But, uh, so I'm, I'm actually pretty interested to see how that plays out, because once they make the fight a 6 on 5 instead of a 5 on 5, it could be really interesting. Jenna is going to be the key in this game. She's going mid, uh, so she will be going AP Janna mid. She'll get pretty farmed up, and she will be able to disengage almost every single fight as long as she's not the one that gets initiated on. Uh... Nidalee, of course, Nidalee is always pretty powerful, depending on if she goes AP or AD. Her poke could be absolutely insane, or she can do a little bit more bruiser status. Uh oh, Alistair's coming around from behind, going to get this Nidalee, Pulverize coming out, and possibly Headbutt back. Yes, Headbutt does come back, and the Ignite goes off. And unfortunately, Nidalee does not have Flash. It's not going to work out for her. And... Let me disable chat. Yeah, ping did seem like it kind of spiked up there for uh, for a second. I did notice a little bit of lag, but that's neither here nor there, I suppose. I guess it wasn't just me. Oh, a lot of damage coming out from the graves. Those ghouls are just going to be pr proving to be quite the menace in bottom lane if, if York just keeps spamming those ghouls like he can. He does know that the red team has a ward in this bush. If he didn't see it already, he was able to notice that uh, this purple or red caster minion did shoot him from a distance when he was in the bush. Leeson might be coming down to bot to get a nice little gank off. Let's see how that goes for them. Looks like they'll be okay for a minute. But Grace on this team, Grace is going to be really powerful because once you, the great stun coming out from Terek, but he doesn't have his, uh, he doesn't have a shatter yet, so he's not going to be able to follow up with any armor reduction or anything like that. 
But Graves being on this team is going to be really powerful because once a Janna gets super, super fed, because it's almost impossible to shut down a Janna, uh, when she's mid, she can just throw her tornadoes out all day. Uh, she's going to be able to throw that shield onto Graves, plus Graves gets all the heals from Taric for the most part, and possibly Nidalee as well with Summoner heal. Graves is going to be very difficult to kill. They have to lock down three or four people with their stuns. They just have to. That's the only way. So if the red team clumps up, they c they're probably going to lose the team fights later on in the game. But uh, if they can keep good positioning as well as good spacing, as long as they don't fight in tight corridors like right here uh, or you know some other really tight areas. If they fight in open places like the river is a little bit more open... Uh, in mid lane or something like that. It'll be a little bit easier. Lee Sin might be coming for gank, but it looks like Kennen is being pushed. So Lee Sin is not going to be able to provide the pressure that he wants to. And Lee Sin doing a great job from coming up through the river because they don't know that Kennen actually put a ward in this bush, uh, in the tri bush up top. They, uh, If I was Kennen, I probably would have put it here uh, since it'll be has been known to push quite a bit. Leeson might be going in for a kick. No, he looks like he's just going to safeguard for funsies. Brand did ping out Leeson. And a lot of damage coming out. Ignite goes down. Ezreal does get the last hit. The headbutt. Teleport coming down onto Janna. Janna's doing work. Being able to get some damage. Great Leeson coming in. And the Dazzle coming out from Tarek. Being able to pick up that kill with ease. Great teleport by Janna, great coordination by the red team. Doesn't get any better than that. That was... That's that's high-level solo queue at work right there for you. Uh, but yeah, having Lee Sin, Lee Sin's a great ganker. I don't know how... Uh, against an Alistair. Alistair probably has a little bit better of a ganks, but this is actually really close. It's possible. Oh, Alistair gets juked. From the resonating strike and then the safeguard. Lee Sin's just doing work playing with that Alistair. Alistair laughs as he goes back. Oh no, sorry, that was Yorick that was laughing. Uh, but Tarek being on the team, you know, he adds a little bit of extra fabulous to the team. Instead of there being uh, two girls on the team, there is now three. But he will provide that extra heal, the uh, armor reduction. And nobody on this team is really armor heavy. Nobody on the blue team is armor heavy. So having that shatter uh, plus his ultimate once he gets it, his radiance, is really going to help out his team. Just with the aura and then the aura debuff. So it's going to be... It's, I'm pretty interested to see these team fights later on. I mean, I know his, his shatter really only gives armor and not magic resist. So... He's most likely, and they're going, the blue team is double AP, if not, like, they're almost completely AP. Because Yorick does a lot of magic damage, uh, so does Ezreal, and then Brand, Alistair, and Kennen all do magic damage as well. Ken is getting massively poked out here. It's going to be really scary if he decides to stay in this lane. Nidalee, she is level 6. She does also have heal, summoner heal, and her regular heal spell. She can just pounce on him. She can almost kill him instantly. She does have ignite as well. And now Lee Sin is coming up for the gank on top of that. Brand is going to try to pick up the blue buff. Nidalee's going to come in here for... I seriously think she's going to, to dive the cannon. I don't see why she wouldn't. She doesn't see. She doesn't have any ward coverage, so that may be why she's being a little bit more cautious, trying to use. He might. She might be thinking he's baiting, since he does. Yes, he does have his ult. He does go down almost instantly, but Nidalee is going to go. No, Nidalee does have summoner heal. Jukes out even the casters, <laughs> doing some damage. And Tarek does come back for the heal. The dazzle coming out and possibly the shatter. Yes, the shatter lowering his armor. Lee Sin is going to go, no, Nidalee goes down from the tower shot, they traded too much, and the ult coming out from Bran isn't going to be enough, because they do separate in time, Tarek is going to get out of there, Graves is right on their tail, and they have absolutely no idea that Graves is there, they are pinging it, they don't want to go that way, 
or they're trying to head him off at the pass. Yes. So Alistair headbutts Lee Sin back down, and Graves does. Yes, Graves is able to take down Alistair, but Brand is not going to be able to take him down. I'm just going to be able to auto attack the Brand and let Lee Sin run away scot free. Very unfortunate for the blue team, but great job by the red team being able to shift all their champions over the top, get that cannon as well as their jungler. Kennen did use his ult, so he's not going to be able to gank uh, very well. And he did get spotted by this Red's ward that's almost out. Very good ward placement by the Red team. Being able to do that uh, and knowing that they are going to go for ganks. Especially with Alistair. Alistair is one of the best gankers in the game just because his hold but headbutt pulverized combo does it does so much work. It just does work. So if they're against the wall, he can headbutt him against the wall, stuns him for like a second, and then pulverizes him, stuns him for another second and a half. And that's a lot of time. You're just doing nothing because you can't. And Nidalee has a little bit of AP, but it doesn't look like she's actually going AP. She's doing a lot of damage. That Phage is proccing like crazy. Very unfortunate for the Kennen. But, you know, that's just how the Phage works. Sometimes it works for you, sometimes it works against you. Unfortunately, this time it was working against him. Oh, my mouse is freaking out. There we go. Jan is still bottom, which is quite interesting. She just started to turn it off, but she just started. Yeah, great job getting almost a full line of damage from that. That was a really weird graphic on the ground. Safeguard does come out on Janna and the ult. On or the ult from York onto the Ezreal does finally go away. Very disheartening for the blue team. Uh, blue team does not. I mean, they're still winning this game. They're they're still up a thousand gold, so it's very possible that they're probably just winning in farm overall. Uh, it, Brand does have 26 more CS than the Janna, which is pretty surprising actually. Because Janna is usually a really good farmer. And they are doing a lane swap, it seems. Janna is going to be getting the blue buff and staying bottom while they send Graves Taric mid to deal with Brand. Brand may have a little bit of issues. Uh-oh, headbutt, pulverized combo. He headbutts a minion and pulverizes. Great job by being able to get that stun. And the old bounces to creep and pack. It looks like, yes, Kennen and Italy killed each other. They committed Kitty side and Yordle side. I think I might actually go back because I'm a little bit interested to see. Uh, so I'm just tailing it. All right, so let's see how this fight of top went. So it looks like Kenna goes in and pops his ult. It gets ignited. It does have a lot of damage. It looks like the ignite and the minions. Minions OP just absolutely destroying him at this point in time. Ezreal's doing quite a bit of damage to the Janna. Janna is able to shield and get away without too many problems, though. Let's see if we can get back up to live here real quick. Yeah, oh, and the ult come out from Ezreal. Looks like he's just going to push the lane. And then try to recall as soon as possible. Just trying to pick up some items, because he does have a little bit of gold. He's probably just going to push back. Janna has a couple issues last hitting at the tower. It's not too bad. Uh oh, tear disconnected from the game. That's gonna prove to be not very. Oh, the stun from stun from Brand just barely missing, which is quite unfortunate on his part. But it will happen from time to time. The tear DCing though, that is the worst part about this so far. I don't like when people disconnect from games. It, it kind of turns games into a one-sided adventure for the most part. Ken is trying to scare off Nidalee as much as possible. Nidalee's missing, he's juking a lot of the Nidalee Spears, which is great for him, but it it's not, it's not really stopping her from doing as much harass as she can, since Kennen doesn't have a heal of any kind besides his spell vamp that he gets from the Gunblade. He's in a lot more, uh, he's in a worse state to poke. But then again, Nidalee's using a lot of mana trying to poke as well at the same time. So she can just run out of mana, and then again, she can go into cougar form and still push creeps like crazy. 
damage does go actually go into cougar form does a lot of damage to the Ken Kenan's going to have to use his health potions to try to get away from this I think the next big set of kills are gonna go down top even though there's a lot of people in mid right now I think the next big thing is gonna go up on top Italy is pretty much completely out of mana at this point in time. Alistair is initiating onto Lee Sin, but they are pinging in a little bit, trying to get him to back off, because they do know that there's a lot of people on the red team there. They did ward the blue buff as well, and it looks like they're all converging onto Kennen up top, and a great job. Headbutt Pulverized Combo coming down, but the tower is not actually attacking the proper person that he wanted, and now he is completely converged onto four of them, and a great job getting that extra bit of damage, the headbutt pulverized combo again on the tower, being able to do a ton of damage. A lot of damage still going off, and it does get duplicated by the Yorick ult, and Alistair's just going to go around another headbutt pulverized combo coming out as much as possible, and it is, the ult does run out just in time. Graves is able to pick that last kill up, and it looks like they're going all in on Yorick now, and it, Yep, York unfortunately does go down, and Red Team is going to take this top, this first top tower. Extremely well coordinated by the Red Team. You have to give them, you have to give them props for that. Kennen might be able to stop one of the recalls here, though, because I believe he, no, he doesn't have his ult. He did use it when he was trying to, uh, when he was trying to fend off the three people at the tower. Yeah, he's just gonna go for the, he's just gonna go for the creeps. But now we have Ezreal soloing the dragon. Really good for the blue team since they are a little bit behind. Great job by Brand able to help out. His long the range on his skill shots just helps so much. Uh, it just it helps a significant amount. Just being able to do it from over the wall. Uh, Cause if if the red team did have wards, they would have known that they were doing damage to the dragon. I don't know if they would have got there in time. They did have a ward over the wall right here at the Wraith. So they did see Brand come in there and then leave. So that I'm assuming that they know. And bottom lane. Unfortunately, Ezreal does go down. Let's see if we can catch that. Oh no. So they got Ezreal red buff. And then I believe that he went bottom and got instantly gibbed by the Nidalee. So we're going to see how this goes. Nidalee's there. Oh, headbutted right into, yes, and the flash with the ignite, or sorry, the pounce and the ignite go down onto Ezreal. Not going to be able to get away. Is, oh, no. Another, another headbutt into the wall. Great job by Elster being able to pin her down as long as possible. But Nidalee's just too mobile. There's absolutely nothing she can do. Great harass coming out from the red team since their main AD carries down and their jungler slash support is bottom messing around with Nidalee. Probably about to go down actually. Yes, he's definitely gonna go down. Ezreal coming out. Delay. Great headbutt trying to get away, but it does go down from the auto attacks and the red buff from the Nidalee. A lot of damage coming out from Brand, being able to get his combo on and stunning the Taric, but just using it to run away, which is definitely the safe thing to do. Nidalee is still doing as much pushing as she possibly can in this bottom lane. Not sure how well she's going to do with both Ezreal and Kennen coming down bottom. Yeah, she's going to be able to run away perfectly fine because that is what Nidalee does. She runs away. Janus Fernados are doing an insane amount of damage right now. Even her Zephyr is doing a lot of damage. Blue team starting to lose this game. They're behind by five kills, so losing in fights. But they're doing a really good job in staying ahead as far as gold goes. I'm not exactly sure where they're getting all this gold from. They're down one tower. They did tie, or they did get the dragon. Everything else besides that, though, looks like they're losing, and they're losing in CS top. Uh, they're you know, barely winning in CS mid, bottom lane. 
Uh, they're winning by 22 CS in bottom lane. So that's probably where most of the difference comes from. Nidalee takes the bottom tower with full effectiveness. Yeah, they're going to let Nidalee push all by herself. There's nothing they can really do to stop the Nidalee at this point. Jenna also has... Uh, Jenna also has teleport, so it's really it's gonna be really hard. A lot of damage coming out from Brand and Jana being able to come out. Oh, and Kennen comes in. The headbutt pulverized combo also nailing him. Oh, they are taking the tower with that ghost from Ezra. Ezra's gonna be able to zone him a little bit, but not forever. Tower attacks now going on to the real Ezra, which is not good for the team. Headbutt pulverized flash pulverized. Oh, and the headbutt pushed back, but was able to safeguard away, but the Brand's passive. Oh, just barely. The passive blaze from Brand is just so good. Because it does percentage damage, which makes it so good. In that time, though, Nidalee was able to take the second bottom tower. And now she's just going to be able to get away. She does get stunned, actually. So they, she didn't actually get away. She tried to juke, and unfortunately she did not juke the right way. Uh, great for the blue team. They're they're definitely coming back in this game. That helps. That helps a whole lot. Uh, but then again, you know, Nidalee taking two towers for her death. Definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. Ezreal's launching his ult out just trying to get some creeps. And now it looks like, he, yeah, he's just going to let the creeps tank the tower. And let the tower get some free experience and some damage. Uh, as much as possible. They're... He doesn't have time to push down his top tower. It's a good choice just to farm it and go back. His ult is on such a low cooldown. It's on a minute now. There's no real reason not to use your ult when you have to go back. So by the time you get in lane, by the time it's useful again, it will be up. Plus, he had to wait time for the Slicing Maelstrom and as well as the Omen of Death to come out from Yorick and Kennen. So there's no real reason to keep on hold of it when you can use it for farming, I suppose. Yeah, and when he's going back. There's really no reason. So let's take a look at the gold here, where everybody's at. Uh, highest CS in the game is the Ezreal. Ezreal with 179 CS at 21 minutes, which is pretty good. It's definitely not bad. With the amount of roaming and action that's been going on in this game, that's actually really, really good. It's pretty difficult to get that kind of CS in a game, let alone in a game where there's a lot of action. It's only 21 minutes in, and there's 23 kills. That means there's more than a kill per minute. And that's a lot, because that doesn't happen very frequently. Usually that happens once the team fights start, which it pretty much has started at this point. But uh, the highest CS on the red team is going to be the Janna and the Nidalee are tied for 157. Great job by those two, but then again, Nidalee has four kills, so she's exceeding everybody on her team's gold count by about a thousand just because of those uh, only Janna by 500 but uh, Janna has five assists so Janna's doing a lot of work as far as assisting and all coming out from and it looks like they're trying to disengage this fight Alistair is running away as much as possible leaving his squishies at the front of the fight Ezra turns around throws his ult out does a lot of damage hits four of them and now Terrakis all by herself the great ult coming out from Brand being able to hit everybody on their team. Kennen gets dragon kicked back from the Lee Sin. And the spear comes out, almost hits the Kennen. The Kennen goes coming out. Oh, the Terror uses his ult to try and get that very last hit onto the Kennen, but unfortunately, he's not able to do enough damage. Great flash coming out from the red team, being able to dodge that. Oh, nice headbutt and ignite going onto the Nidalee, being able to take that down. Leeson coming out. Leeson gonna be. Oh, Leeson almost gets the kill, and the buckshot will take out that cannon. Oh, that was really close. Sorry. I know, I kind of screamed like a girl. That buckshot was so close, though. Uh, Kennen did a great job of baiting out that. I think Graves knew he was gonna die. So he just went for it just in case. He's like, eh, I might be able to get it. And I think that just completely sealed the nail in the coffin. There's absolutely no way he's going to get it. Once he turned around, it was do or die. And he did, and he died. So I guess it was do and die, but you know what I mean. 
But great job by the blue team. They were behind in almost every aspect except for gold. Uh, they were losing in kills. They were losing a lot of the team fights. They were just getting outplayed and outclassed. Uh, they did stay ahead in gold, and now that their champions are all level 11 at least, all their main champions like Ezreal, Kennen, Brand, the level 2 of their ultimate is so significant on these AoE team comps that they're able to do a lot more damage than these flat out bursty defensive comps. Uh, because they can max out their heal at level 9 or level 13, things like that, but they don't really have anything to prevent it except for Janna's Monsoon. But once the Monsoon is over, there's nothing that their team can do. Brand's doing a great job at hitting that 11k gold mark. 7, 2, and 3. Brand's doing it. Oh, Spear coming out just barely misses. Great job by Nidalee, just checking every bush that she can with those traps. And New York eats the trap because he's hungry for traps. That was probably the worst joke, just ignore us at that. I would, that wasn't even supposed to be a joke, it just turned out terrible in all every aspect of everything. Oh my god. Yeah, don't worry about it. Just ignore it. So, blue team is pinging Ezreal right now. I'm not sure if Ezreal just wants to keep farming. He really isn't behind. I mean, he has 8,500 gold. He doesn't really have any kills or assists. Because uh, he hasn't... He's been side pushing pretty much the whole time. Kind of like n what Nidalee's been doing. Nidalee's just been side pushing. A uh, big initiation going in. The dragon kick coming back. Hitting the brand. Brand's getting his ult off before he dies somehow. I don't know how. Great ult coming out from Ezreal. But the pulverize does not go out yet. And blue team is going to be losing this fight. Oh, Ezreal is going to run away. He gets... Yes, he does flash over the wall, or blinks over the wall. And red team has absolutely no idea where he went, and they know they're not going to be able to catch up with him. Yes, Ezreal is taking a break. A lot of damage still going out onto the blue team. Red team doing a great job at applying that pressure. Once they took out Bran, who's their main source of damage right now, there's nothing they can do. So once Bran ulted, Janna Monsoon almost immediately, right when that started coming. So she almost nullified all the damage that came out from Bran's ultimate. Uh, at the same time, Kennen didn't go in right after that, or he got pushed away. I couldn't quite see because it was at the tip of the screen. But either way, Kennen was not in the fight to cancel the ult or... Uh, do simultaneous damage with that brand, and that's what they have to do. They have to make sure that they waste that monsoon of Janna's, and then Kennen goes in. Uh, so if Bran can ult, because that's the second time I've seen her ult as soon as Bran uh, throws out uh, throws out his pyroclasm. The second time. And that typically means, and it was almost instantaneous both times. So that means that Jane is watching out for that big source of damage because she thinks that once he initiates, the Kennen's going to initiate as well. So she's trying to get as much healing as she can do onto the entire team as fast as possible. Uh, so if the blue team can time that right, right when Rand throws it, right after she monsoons, if Kennen can flash in there and start a slicing Maelstrom, it's possible that he can interrupt that almost instantly and continue to do a truckload of damage so that's what i'm going to be excited that's what i really want the blue team to excel at uh, as far as the red team i th with janna and lee sin it's going to be really difficult to stay in there with kennen kennen i think is completely countered in this matchup i don't think there's anything kennen can do i really don't uh anytime kennen tries to go in there they're just going to wait for him to ult, and then he's going to get Monsoon away, or he's going to get Dragon kicked away. Those are the only two scenarios I see happening. Blue team is going for a very aggressive Baron, trying to force the fight, but this, the red team still has five people up, so I'm not sure if this is the best idea. Uh, looks like they're backing off a little bit, which is a great idea. Alistair did not see the red ward in that middle bush, unfortunately. Janna's just destroying these towers and now taking the inhibitor with her. Oh, and blue team knows that they have to initiate. Exhaust going down onto Graves. Graves trying to run away. Ezreal hits a couple people, being able to do a lot of damage. 
and Brand throws out his ult, able to do a lot of damage to the Nidalee. Nidalee is still chasing after the Brand, doing as much damage as possible. He gets ulted by the Yorick, and they are able to take out the Nidalee. Kennen goes back to try and kill the Janna, and he barely gets her, but she gets the tower and the inhibitor. Overall, that was a great trade bottom lane, but they, the red team also lost two other players, and now they're going to lose this mid tower and possibly another one. Uh, they do have 25 seconds. Yep, they're just going to harass as much as possible. Great pulverized headbutt combo coming out. And York goes down from the Dragon Kick of Lee Sin and taking too much tower damage. Now they're now the blue team is forced to back off. Uh, with losing their support like that when it was not necessary. It looks like they were just getting a little bit too cocky, a little bit too uh, overzealous. They wanted to take that tower. They wanted to even the inhibitor count uh, so that they didn't have to play as defensive because this is the bottom lane for the blue team. That means that Super minions are going to be pushing this lane while Baron is way up here. So they're going to be super minions here that they're going to be fighting. And it's going to give Red a free Baron, basically. Uh, so I'm very interested to see how this is going to play out. It was a great job by the Red team to push bottom lane as much as possible. Once Nidalee took that first top tower, they sent her right at bottom. And she was able to take out two towers. She did die a lot in order to do that but in the end as you can see it probably paid off uh, Janna has teleport so she can still teleport to any of these fights as long as they throw a ward down and she's still gonna be able yeah she's still gonna be able to push really hard which just looks like what that's what she's gonna do she wants to play really safe she wants to stay really far back now that they see that Janna's bottom, Shirelius was popped by the boot team. The second Shirelius was also popped. And the Dragon Kick coming out from Lee Sin. Kennen being able to do a lot of damage. No, Kennen does not quite get anybody with the Slicing Maelstrom. Except for that last second from Lee Sin. And Brand's ultimate Pyroclasm only hits one person. One of the most unfortunate events. But targeting a Nidalee... And Elise in since they're both so mobile. There's absolutely nothing that they could have done. Jenna is now forced to back off. But also caused Ezreal, who's their main AD carry. Oh, they're able to catch Italy out of position again. Her hex triggers can keep alive for a little bit longer. But not long enough. Uh, Brand's just doing so much damage right now. Brand has a Void Staff, a Rabadon's Death Cap, and a Rylai's Crystal Scepter. With a little bit of extra health and Gold Pretend from the Heart of Gold. And Ezreal's going to keep this bottom lane pushed as much as possible. And they're going to keep it at 4 versus 4 as long as they can. Uh, blue team's now pinging for Baron again. I think it's a little bit too late to start Baron since they didn't do it right away. If they did it right after they killed Nidalee, it's highly probable that that could have... Oh, great headbutt pulverized combo coming out. Barely missed the stun. Ezreal ult's coming out, hitting the Taric. And the Ignite going down, but does get shielded. And oh, oh my gosh, all the spells have been used to save the Tarek. Not sure if that was 100% wise since Tarek isn't the most. Oh, and a great ultimate coming out from Bran, but it doesn't jump to Tarek. Oh my goodness. So many cooldowns used trying to take down that Tarek and save the Tarek at the same time. I think almost everybody flashed. Yeah, Bran and Kennen flashed, as well as Tarek, Lee Sin, and Janna. So, great job on both teams, just being able... That was such an aggressive fight, but unfortunately, nothing came of it. And the headbutt coming out from Alistair. Alistair is getting des absolutely destroyed by the Janna. Deathfire Grasp goes out and hits him for a lot of damage. Kennen is going to... Oh, he just pops his son is the last second and still goes down from the Tarek. And the Shirelia is coming out now from the support York. Trying to get away, but you're not going to be able to run away from Nidalee. And a great stun coming out. And the ult as well from the Brand. 
Bran is just doing so much damage still. Bran has not popped his uh, his Elixir of Brilliance, which I'm a little bit shocked of, because right before you use your ult, it's nice to use that Elixir of Brilliance. If not, just to get the lower cooldown, but to also get the extra AP. Oh, now the inhibitor has respawned, so blue team is forced to either go back and try to defend that inhibitor or defend Baron. At this point, it's a 50-50. This inhibitor is going to cause a lot of problems if it goes down again. So they sent Ezreal, since he can push creeps relatively fast as he have. He has a Trinity Force and a Bloodthirster, so he does a lot of damage. Uh, with especially with the Lost Whisper too. He can throw out his ultimate. He's higher than level 16. Oh, okay. He's going to throw his ult out to try to push the bottom minion wave. He only gets one wave, though. So I'm not sure that was the best choice. And I probably would have saved that for a fight that possibly would have started at Baron. Uh, so that you could have turned that 4v5 into a 5v5-ish. And Ezreal's now face-checking brushes. Just making sure that nobody from the red team is there. Now Ezreal's going to try to replenish his... Red buff, he does able to get that without a problem, but red team is now setting up for the Baron. Blue team sees that the red team is taking out their wards, and now they're getting extremely concerned. And again, Janna is bottom. I don't know if she got pinged out, because she hasn't been seen. The great part about Janna is that she can do... Yes, okay, so blue team is pinging, and red team is also pinging. Janna can teleport to any of these wards in the bush. Janna does teleport in and blue team goes in. Ezreal comes out and a lot of damage going out. Lee Sin gets his dragon kick off. Great shot by Ezreal just being able to poke off everybody. Janna gets her full ultimate off, being able to save almost everybody. Lee Sin does go down eventually and so does Ezreal. Oh, and now unfortunately the only person that's left is that Alistair. And Zephyr is just doing so much damage from the Janna. Jin has 10 stacks of Mejais. Great job by Janna being able to do that. And her shield is going to be absolutely ridiculous. He, he giving her a shield of so much right now. And Baron's headbutt is just proving to be too strong. Ooh. And Red Team gets the Baron. This is where the game starts getting incredibly scary. Blue Team knows that they got Baron because they did see that pretty much the whole thing go down. Uh, they definitely saw the aftermath of two people walk by with Baron. Kenan was the first one to spawn and now it's Brand. Uh, he's so close to taking down this tower. He's going to take down this tower and run away as fast as possible. Luckily for him, Kenan was not able to get there in time. His lightning rush was not quite fast enough to get him to that mid lane where he needed to be to help prevent that tower from going down. But even if he was, I'm not sure if he would have been able to 1v1 a Graves, even with the tower. Uh, especially this late in the game, Graves just doing so much damage. The Infinity Edge Phantom Dancer. Uh, he doesn't have a Last Whisper yet though. So that is definitely a plus for the blue team, that Graves does not have a Last Whisper. That's probably the main thing that's keeping them in this game right now because they are still kind of losing some of these fights. That's 23 kills to 22. So great job. They are going to go for Dragon, trying to get a little bit more gold. Just kind of to even it as much as possible. They're up 3. Th yeah, they're up 3k gold right now. Blue team is, despite everything else. Oh, and a spear coming out from Nidalee. And the Shirelia is coming up, only getting one other person besides the York. I don't think that was a very good Shirelius for them. A great flash pulverize and ult from Kenna coming out. And with the Zanias right away, being able to do as much damage as possible. Graves is coming in right after him though. And Brand is still throwing out as many spells as he can. Kenan's doing as much from a distance. And Ezreal does have his ghost. He is going to blink over the wall. And oh, Tarek flashes a spell, but does still get nipped by the last little tip of that spell. Oh, and Pran is just barely missing a couple of these spells. It's really scary for the red team. Great initiation on the blue team 
Red team had Baron, and they still lost two people, almost three people. And blue team lost nobody. Uh, so now that puts red team at a disadvantage as well as puts them in a defensive position. Putting them in a defensive position when they're supposed to have an advantage is fantastic. And they still have not taken down. Oh no, Bran is taking the tower for quite a long time. Not sure that was the best idea. Red team has not taken that bottom inhibitor again. So it's a downside for them, and Shirelia is being popped out just so they can get away. And the red team has wards even in their jungle, which is a great job by the red team being able to recognize this. And Lee Sin thought about going after him, but decided against it. Oh no, red team still has a ward there, and they're going to pick up a quick draw coming out. Oh my gosh, great job by Yorg being able to get out of there. I don't know how he saw that conversion coming on there. Perfect timing on everything. Graves is still chasing him. Even after everything, Graves is just... hes He does not care at this point. In the end, York will not be able to go back. He has 1500 gold in his name. He could pick up a pretty nice item for that. So I'd like to see him go back and get that. He just needs to stop recalling in the middle of bushes. But Red Team has wards everywhere. They have a ward in race, ward in this bush, ward in that bush. It's just everywhere. They have a ward throughout their whole jungle. Any escape, well maybe not any escape, but their favorite escapes and entrances to their jungle are now warded. So they will have vision on pretty much everywhere in the bottom jungles. And that's the only place you really need control at this point. Uh, they do have a ward in their top jungle, just for security's sake. Uh, but since Baron's down, uh, there's no real reason to be at top. And Blue will want to stay bottom as long as possible because their inhibitor's down. So they want to have quick access to that inhibitor if somebody decides to start backdooring. Uh, great job by the Blue team to notice that. And same with the Red team. They're able to ward to compensate for the fact that they know that blue team wants to stay as close to that open exposed inhibitor as much as possible. That spear doing so much damage, oh god. Why? Spear to the face. And York ulted himself. I don't exactly know why. He did ult himself. Uh, York's ult is on a 6 second cooldown. So it's not terribly long. They will be able to do a little bit of damage here. Ezreal coming out misses everybody, but it does hit that tower for so much damages. Just kidding. <laughs> it does actually hit the tower. I don't know if anybody didn't know that, but yes, not many spells actually do damage to towers. I think there's three or four. Brand is throwing out spells, just trying to get some vision, but turns out all red team is on the other side. The cannon goes down, does get a stun on three of them, and gets his... Oh my gosh, Sonny's his pop, but now Graves is on top of him. He's ignited, he's not going to get enough heals, is he? He does stay alive just a little bit long, and again, they take out the same two people almost every fight. They take out that Nidalee and that Taric. Great job by the blue team. They still haven't lost anybody, but Ken does have to go back. The blue team is going to be able to take this. Oh, and the great headbutt pulverize coming out. Great follow up damage by the whole team. Perfect execution by the blue team. And they're coming back in this fight. And they don't have the second tower to be able to do anything. And it looks like they're, they might be just going for the win. Uh, the ult coming out from Ezreal and York doing as much damage as possible but oh no Brand is so close to going down they're not actually going to be able to take him down and two of them are still dead they're going to Shirelia's Reverie out of there great stun perfect stun by yeah perfect stun by the Brand to be able to take that out and now a Lich Bane onto the Janna oh my gosh that is terrifying so they were pinging that like they knew a ward was there or they just didn't want to risk it. Ezreal ends up taking the blue buff, which I suppose...
suppose is okay. He does use a lot of mana. Uh, it would have been nice to have Bran have that little bit of extra uh, mana regen as well as cooldown reduction. Although I'm not sure if his cooldown reduction... No, his cooldown reduction is only 19%. So he could have really used that blue buff more than pretty much anybody else on the team. Bran has Will the Ancients. I'm not sure if Kennen does as well. Kennen also... So the blue team is rocking a double Will the Ancients. Great job. I'm really excited about this Janna because I think she's going to be able to one-shot somebody. With her Zephyr and a Tornado with the Deathfire Grasp and the 10 stacks with the Lich Bane too. It's so dirty. It's so dirty. Baron has respawned. And there is going to be a little bit of a fight over it. Janna comes in, but she d she makes sure not to hit the Dragon with that Tornado because that Tornado does do a lot of damage. That's full length. Oh, and the red team was able to steal. Great job by Graves being able to steal that Baron. And Kennen comes in with the ultimate. Janna doing an insane amount of damage. Absolutely ridiculous. Shreya's really popped for the red team. Now the red team is taking a lot of damage, but Graves is still doing so much damage to everybody. Headbutt Pova is coming out, and Graves gets caught from that. And the Ezreal is now following up on the Jan. Jan is still able to get away. She's so fast. They're probably just going to ignore her, push the creep waves as fast as they can. Janna teleports to that last standing tower, buys some elixirs, and equips them. Is going to shield the tower, which is going to shield it for quite a bit. Of, look how long that shield stays on. And Janna just instantly oh almost instantly kills but Alistair was able to take out enough time so that she can oh and has so much damage coming out from Janna good game good game that game was so back and forth I had no idea who's gonna win uh, but good game to the red team and congratulations to the blue team and again guys uh, thanks for all your support I really appreciate it. I like that you guys enjoy the commentary that I do. Uh, subscribe to my videos, uh, like the videos, comments, anything that you guys want to talk about. I pretty much reply to, I think I have replied to every instant message or comment that requires a response. Uh, if you have any specific champions you want to see, or any pro players that you want to see, just leave me a comment send me an IM and I'll try my hardest to get those people. I have access to pretty much every server except for the Korean one because I don't have a Korean social security number unfortunately um, but I can get pro games pretty much everybody right now uh, except for the people that are in Korea. But yeah thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.